Alrighty then, good afternoon everybody, uh, Silver Dragon here, coming at you with some uh, Dead Linger, uh, with a little bit of a uh, announcement of sorts, uh, unfortunately, and quite, uh, quite predictably actually, the Dead Linger has now officially ceased production. After three years, three different engines, and basically wasting probably two to three hundred plus thousand dollars of our money, uh, the Sandswept Dev de slash Devs, I'm pretty sure it might have been the one guy at this point, uh, have now officially put the game on pretty much indefinite hold. So, you know what? Let's just go ahead and take a look at what we actually were given after all this fucking madness. I'm just going to play a solo map. Create a whole fucking new world. Let's go ahead and uh, just go for it. Yes, yeah, Pepper Valley. Name it, blah, 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 whatever. I don't forgive a damn. So, yeah. After a pretty, you know, crappy initial ogre build, which, you know, it was interesting. It at least showed the basic concept. It was, you know, this game had some significant potential. The amount of things that they were saying they were going to put in the game was fantastic you know it had a lot going for it then of course they transitioned over to unity and did that initial release on the steam early access without giving it to their initial testers that they had before in which case their move to unity completely fucked up the entire game like every there were structures floating in the sky zombies were kind of half buried in the ground and all sorts of shit was going wrong with that so, yeah, that was just terrible in and of itself. After several months, though, after several months of additional development beyond that in the Unity build, they actually had gotten the game to a relatively fun state, I have to say. You know, there was a lot to explore. You could have a little bit of fun. Zombies were m mildly dangerous. You could group up with friends, uh, you know, build some structures, just have some fun of it. And... It's pretty much, at this point, you know, they kept switching engines, they kept, you know, like, look at this, this is fucking terrible, this is what they did when they switched over to Unreal. And, I mean, look at this, this looks like shit. This looks like a bunch of prepackaged shit Unity assets that one, or not Unity, uh, Unreal assets, that one could have slapped together in 15 minutes with very little, you know, programming knowledge. I mean, basic crap models with uh, pretty, you know, I mean, look at that. That's not exactly the most sophisticated animation in the world now, is it? Hell, they were more interesting before. Oh, hey, they added cop zombies. Wow, that's what they've been doing over the past several months. <laughs> oh, my God, this is terrible. So yeah, after three plus years of development now, you know, probably close to at least $300,000, this is what we have. A whole, of, a whole lot of wasted time and a whole lot of just what the fuck, pretty much. Terrible. Ah, uh, bollocks. I guess he, uh, I guess he must have run out of uh, $20 bills in his uh, toilet paper rolls. <laughs> Uh, not enough 20s left to wipe the golden ass. Time to call it quits. Uh, as you can kind of tell, I am a little bit bitter about this. Honestly, you know, I've been... The zombie survival genre has been incredibly oversaturated over the past couple of years. It is one of my favorite genres next to space games and pirate games. And space pirate games. <laughs> and space pirate zombie games, but no. Uh, so... When I first read the concept for this, and it was quite, it was quite incredible, you know, in and of itself. Like it was gonna have a procedurally generated world the size of Earth, essentially. So, a insane amount of space to travel, which honestly I think was too freaking huge. That was that was just too much. Like, who would ever want to even have a world that size? You would never explore even a portion of it. It's almost like what's the point of even adding that as a, you know, objective in a way. Uh, I was going to have trains, potentially, planes, you know, rivers, maybe even an ocean, lakes, boats, all sorts of insane shit. Uh, they were planning for a bunch of different uh, multiplayer modes, such as just, you know, sandbox solo survival, uh, survival with, uh, with friends, uh, kind of a versus, almost clan kind of... Uh, survival slash pvp which was interesting just open world pvp slash pve 
So they had a lot going for them. They were planning on doing a lot of interesting things, but in the end, this is what we got. I mean, look at this. This is... I can't even... Oh, look, I'm... There we go. Oh, wow, look at that knockback animation. It's fantastic. I can see we've really... Well, our money has been well spent on this. <laughs> You know what? It's a shame. I know there's no guarantees when it comes to early access. That's an obvious, obvious thing. But, you know, it's almost... Indie, de indie devs seem to be lucky in a way. Because if we were if we were a full-on publisher at this point, we'd probably be suing. <laughs> but as it is, I highly doubt there's very much that we can actually do in that regard. Quickly. Oh, no. Screw it. Oh god, this is so much worse than the uh, Unity build, like in every way. The lag is even worse, which is terrible. It's like, you know what the funny thing is, it doesn't even seem like, I've I've been looking after this game pretty much throughout the entirety of its development. I've played the original builds, I've played pretty much every build throughout its development, and it has always seemed like they were putting very little actual effort into this. Like, you look at other games, like Seven Days to Die, which has, in and of itself, a small team. And other games, very, like, other indie games similar to it, that are able to do so many different things with such a small team. And yet these guys could, couldn't even freaking you know, put us, give us decent-ass content between each patch. Without it completely fucking destroying everything. So... To be honest, it's a damn shame. It is really a damn shame. There's a lot of games like this that I've been looking forward to. They've all had their issues. Rome was another one, which I was greatly looking forward to, but then it had to get into an issue with one of its uh, one of its uh, co-founders, basically, where the guy was trying to... Essentially, the one of the, the, the founder was trying to get the co-founder to move over to them so they could work on the game, you know, gave him a, a check to do so for like, I don't know, $50,000 or something to do so, so he could get over there, and he basically tried to cash the check and run, and then tried to sue the company for basically the check bouncing when he had done shit all to earn the actual money itself. So that's that's another really, really cool game that could have been, you know... Could have been fantastic, but God knows if we'll ever even... That we kickstarted, but God knows if we'll ever even see it. If it'll see the light of day. So, the zombie survival genre is really looking down right now. I mean, even games... Even, like, the kind of sort of hyped games recently, of course. Like, you know, DayZ, which is DayZ. I don't even consider that a zombie survival game. I just consider it an open-world PvP game that happens to have weak-ass zombies that really mean fucking nothing. Because the biggest issue I have in all these zombie survival games, wink, is that the zombies just aren't enough of a threat. They really aren't. Like, the only real threat you end up having, like, this is supposed to, like, I've said this before, but this is supposed to be a threat, something that has essentially wiped out humanity, for the most part, you know? They have taken civilization and they have just obliterated it. For something to have that kind of power, it has to be some significant, you know, significantly uh, tough threat, as it were. Oh, at least I don't have my crotch gun anymore. Although this is the this is my down the iron sights kind of aiming right here. Wow, <laughs> God, that's horrible. So yeah, there's just has not been like H1Z1 as well. Same thing. It's just like Daisy. It's an open world PvP game with a couple of building aspects and not a hell of a lot else, really. To be honest, the zombies there are also incredibly pathetic and probably will continue to be so for the foreseeable future. So the only thing that's really left now at this point that I have even the slightest hope of succeeding and actually giving us a good zombie survival game is Survive the Night. Or Survive the Nights. I think it's Survive the Night. Anyway. Uh, and even that one. Like, they did... All they've gotten to so far since their initial uh, kickstart is their stress test, which had a very basic... Like, it even looked, you know, lesser than this, even. Just for what you could do in it. Uh, the thing, the interesting thing about that though is their concept video once again showed a lot that could be done with it, 
and they were working on getting it feature parity. The moment that that actually reaches feature parity with the original videos they were showing, that alone would become a fantastic game. But until that point, that as well is another one where I'm just kind of like, you know, I don't really know if the hell, if this could go either way. And that has, you know, stuff like this. <laughs> At least that's mildly entertaining. Stuff like this has led to, of course, my more recent attitude with a lot of early access games where I'm just fucking done with it almost. You know, I'm a lot more uh, pessimistic when it comes to most early access games. I'm a lot less forgiving when it comes to their, uh, to their flaws. Yes, I understand. It's early access. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's alpha, whatever it happens to be. But as some have said before, early access is not necessarily a... It's not a shield to deflect against criticism. And it seems like a lot more of these need to be criticized almost more heavily at times. Because far too... Even like uh, big name game development studios like... Uh, Double Fine with Space Space DF9. Even they freaking had an early access game that then they completely fucking dropped on us. I mean, seriously, like, come on. Really now. And it was only recently that the community for that actually went into the game and started actually making it decent. Will that happen here? Aim for the head, really. Like, we have not seen that in any zombie survival game slash movie slash TV series in the recent history. Thank you. That is the most valuable tip I have ever heard in my life. I will cherish it. I will cherish it like my firstborn child. Alright. Anyway. Oh, what's up, Jason? Guess we found where you were at. So, yeah. In the end, this is all we really have to show for all that time and money and whatnot and yeah you know i paid 20 bucks for it in all in all back in the original kickstarter uh up to this point at least for the original unity builds i have gotten you know more than enough fun out of it that i've made up my money on this i kind of feel bad for anyone that might have purchased this recently with them still going on about how they're going to you know how this is going to change, how switching over to Unreal is going to change things, how it's going to speed up production, and all the other bullshit lies they were telling us. You know, even even watching the guy on Twitter, he just appeared like a fucking joke most of the time, you know. He kind of shrugged off all the, uh, all the people who were naysaying against him, and really, we had valid reason for it. I mean, honestly, if you, put, if you put yourself in a situation where you've been given money to develop something and a fuck ton of time has gone by and you've, you've given us this, then that's a perfect room for criticism. I mean, come on. Jesus. <laughs> Just terrible. Also, apparently this thing has infinite ammo. You would think it would only have about eight rounds or so, but eh, whatever. I'm not complaining too much, but yeah, I guess, uh, well, with this pretty much being in the position that it is, I guess we're kind of screwed. There's, you know, nothing's going to happen for this. It's not like he's going to suddenly, you know, pop back and be like, Hey guys, I was just kidding. I'm going to keep going at this and produce something good and get it out there for you. I mean, some devs have done that. Some devs have failed. They acknowledged it. They, you know, said they explained why. You were outside the alpha containment area. Yeah, screw you. Uh, but they actually may have come back and, you know, did something good with it. Like the developers for Forsaken Fortress. Uh, really, really good idea. Really good concept with everything. And then they unfortunately went under because they had to go... They were constantly going back and forth on features. Excuse me. And that led to the game just not uh, being able to make it. They wasted a whole lot of time. A lot of the builds like they released were really buggy. I remember there was times when I was originally playing that actually. It was kind of hilarious. Uh, and every single time I loaded into the game, there was an enemy flying by on a chopper, and they would immediately crash it because they didn't know how to fly it, apparently. God, that was funny. Oh, good times. 
like every one of their builds were always full of bugs. They were really inconsistent gameplay wise. They never really explained how to do anything. But in the end, of course, it did fail. They, oh, let's see if I can get rid of this here. They acknowledged it. They pretty much had to just kind of bail for that. But they did eventually come back. They did change it into something else, a strategy, like a pretty much a turn-based slash real-time strategy. What the hell? Uh, Third-person cough. Kind of like this War of Mine, except 3D, <laughs> in a way. And honestly, it wasn't bad. I think they were charging, what, 15 bucks for that? They were giving it away free to everyone who had... Uh, Invested in their previous game. So yeah, it's not too bad. I have to say Go ahead and grab that you picked up the nugget So yeah, you know some developers they just they have to bow out But they can still stick in it stick with it come back Strong and get her done and give us you know what we were hoping to get whether or not he will well, I kind of highly doubt it, but only time will tell. But as it stands, this is what we have. For whatever, I, you know, again, I'm sorry for anyone that might have, you know, bought this recently. But this is all you're going to get. This is all we're going to get. God damn. God damn. But on the upside, there are other games which are quite fantastic that you can actually pick up that are that are similar to this at least zombie survival wise, that are actually worth your money and worth your time and investment. One of which is Project Zomboid, made by the uh, Indie Stone team. A fantastic team who has spent a lot of time, and they, they're they actually a really, really good team that has shown that developers can triumph through adversity and return strong and come up with something fantastic. Essentially, what happened was, during the very, very early parts of the alpha for that, uh, somebody broke into the apartment that they were staying in, that they had the, their computers and their laptop in, and stole their laptop. All of the data was on there, you know, they lost a lot of, like, a couple months worth of progress, and all hell was breaking loose, and, you know, they were, like, wondering what the hell they should do, and so on and so forth. Uh, the community, some, or at least a part of the community, you know, the same kind of thing, vocal minority, as it were, kind of did lash out a bit at them and say, oh, well, you took our money and you're not going to get anything done. And, you know, some bad blood was spread around a bit, but all in all, they stuck with it. They came back and they've produced a very, you know, a fantastic zombie survival game. And, uh, I have been, you know, I've greatly supported that thing since its initial, uh, alpha tech demo, like, years ago. And even today, they are putting out fantastic content. It's got multiplayer. Uh, you can group up with your friends and uh, build your own safe houses. And the zombies, they're actually a freaking threat. Like, my god, you get bit by one of those guys, you might as well take a shotgun to your face. Good luck. I think there's like maybe a, what is it, a 10% or a 1% chance that you might not get infected by a bite. I think it's 25% for a scratch. Uh, but yeah, they definitely need to add more armor systems into the game, though, for that. <laughs> to hopefully deflect some of those. But yeah, there's a lot of zombies around. The, especially if you turn up the uh, horde count. Oh, it gets crazy. Uh, but yeah, that is a fantastic game one could pick up. Another one, of course, is one I've mentioned here today and previously. Seven Days to Die. That is another fantastic uh, single-player and multiplayer zombie survival game uh, that you could pick up. Let me go ahead and shoot this guy here. If I can line up my sight here. Because uh, I'm moving and trying to hit a moving target while I'm at it. Anyway. But yeah, that is a fantastic game. I mean, uh, I end up playing that almost every alpha that they release. Although, in the end, it does, you know, start to grind on you a bit. Just because you're playing a lot more of the same with just a few more and a few new things. So, I would maybe check that out every couple of updates. Give it a try. It is definitely one of the best uh, zombie survival games out there when it comes just to just to pure gameplay and fun value for your money. Let's go ahead and shoot him in the back of the head. Other than that, there's not really too many really good zombie survival era zombie-esque games out there. Of course, 
that's debatable for something like, of course, DayZ. You know, some people really like it. Some people like it. I personally am not a fan of, you know, spending three hours walking from one side of the map to another side of the map. You know, running through buildings, maybe finding a cracker, uh, only to get shot by somebody loaded down with a bunch of rifles that he got from server swapping at the airport or something. <laughs> but, yeah. There really has not been anything of really interesting value recently for that. I mean, the War Z was another horribly atrocious one, which failed horribly. Not just from its from a gameplay standard, but just from development uh, or development developer abuse. Oh, hey, they actually added in the level up system. Wow. Congratulations, you did something. You actually... Oh, and I knocked something over. Well, shit. Whoopsies! What's up, Kappa? Let's see if I can long-range this guy. Yep. Oh, I, I hit him, but must not hit his head. Oh, well. Oh, yay, the sun is going down. But yeah, that game was an absolute shit fest. I mean... Ugh. <laughs> It really was. There were all sorts of, like, admin and, uh, well, I should just say admin abuse that people were giving free items and banning people for just, you know, bullshit reasons and all sorts of shadiness going on there. Not to mention all the bloody microtransactions. I mean, no thank you. Jeez. Like, hell, I had my account banned from that thing, and I didn't even do anything. I just pretty much played it, quit for, like, several months, came back, and it's like, your account has been banned. Really? It's like, it's kind of attached to my Steam account, so I'm assuming you just banned me for no reason so I would buy your shit game again. Well, I can most assuredly tell you, fuck no. Not going to happen. Like, being the end of the world, being a zombie survival game, our concerns should be with surviving. And although banditry does need to be an integral part of a game like that, I think not enough emphasis has been placed on actually working together to survive. Because one would think that, you know, like look at The Walking Dead. How many people do you see just walking around by themselves? Yes, there are a couple of lone wolves. Yes, there are some bandit groups. But you see a lot more grouping together in places like, you know, the governor's town. Uh, the, the group they just had that they eventually got to the prison with and so on and so forth. You know. Some towns may have been fucking batshit crazier than others, you know, for people that have done whatever they could to survive, but come on, at the very least they were working together to a point, point. and I am apparently not aiming anymore. Oh hey, it's the Screamer that they never actually, or no, they never even released that damn APC, did they? They were the siren. That's what it was called. They were showing this like badass, uh, pretty much. Oh, I'm I'm fucking horribly aiming horribly right now. This badass uh, NPC uh, APC, which uh, would pretty much blast the living shit out of you if you got close to it. It would also attack the zombies and whatnot. Hey, definitely a good way to clear out the uh, zombies in a town. That's for sure. But uh, we never really got to see much of that, honestly, other than a couple of videos before they changed over to this hellhole so yeah what can you do but yeah the game that finally manages to get that which is why my hopes for the what is it survive the nights were a little high because they added a sanity system which would affect you if you just indiscriminately went around killing other players uh you could make your hands quiver maybe when you would uh, you know fire off a shot by mistake or something make surviving a little more difficult through various methods you can also lose sanity by eating rat burgers and such. But at the very least, it gives you something to stop just indiscriminate killing on site behavior. With eventually the possibility of just unavoidable suicide. That way, all that stuff you gained from killing players... Oh, there it goes. <laughs> Still, there could be a benefit to killing people and defending yourself, obviously... You wouldn't want to have like a bunch of people with bats naked just running over and beating on you and you don't want to shoot them in the face because you will lose sanity kind of thing. So that obviously has a need of balancing and whatnot. Uh, but still, 
and at least had something to try and promote teamwork. Uh, which has been sorely needed. Whether or not it will actually get, you know, to a position where it is what we finally deserve for a zombie survival game, only time will tell. As of yet, all we've seen is a very, very basic uh, stress test with, uh, you know, almost similar to this in its styling. With a couple of guns we could pick up and shoot and some interesting little places to explore, I have to say. But other than that, that's all we got. So we'll see how things develop. And yeah, I guess I'm probably going to call this here as I've got pretty much nothing else to say at this point. You know, it's it's very unsurprising turn of events that uh, the game here did cease its development. I saw that coming a mile away, so did a lot of other people. We were kind of hoping against hope that, you know, it would continue on and he would actually keep to what he was saying, you know, the bullshit he was saying, but I don't think any of us who've played this for as long as we have ever actually believed that he would keep, you know, that he would eventually deliver uh, a full game to us at this point. I'm pretty sure we were all just like, yeah, no, it's, it's not going to happen. You may wish it's going to happen, but it's it's just not. So, sad sad day, my zombie genre fan friends, but today, today is not our day. Today is not our day. Till next time, everybody. Have yourselves a good day. And maybe one day, we will get the zombie game we all deserve. Peace out for now.